Good day and welcome to the special edition of Focus On. I'm Moi Peterson. Gauteng Premier David Makuru delivered the State of the Province Address, where he highlighted some of the democratic gains and socio-economic progress made in the pre-pandemic period. Joining me now to discuss some of these highlights is Tasnim Mutara, Gauteng MEC for Infrastructure Development. MEC, good afternoon and welcome to this Focus On. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. MEC, um, what were your thoughts about the Premier's um, speech? Uh, well, I thought the speech was um, action-driven, um, noting where we are, where we come from, especially post the pandemic, and what we need to do with the two years left of our term of office of the sixth administration. Of course, in terms of um, the financial, um, financial years and th those processes, um, it will take us into the first year of the seventh administration. Um, but I think it was just to stress that we've come a long way. We've done quite a lot. Um, COVID pushed us back quite a, quite a bit, um, created quite a number of challenges for us. And um, we have an opportunity now to be able to um, claw back and make sure that the last two years of our, our term are um, not left to waste. Um, now, MEC, the Premier mentioned um, some infrastructure um, projects that were put on hold to, due to lockdown and other stoppages. Can you expand on these projects and um, what your department is doing to get back on track? Yes, definitely. So um, all our projects, in excluding um, the work that we were doing in response to COVID, were put on hold um, because the initial lockdowns even stopped the construction industry as a whole. Um, and that stoppage um, with, the, with the lockdown level five, level four, um, construction was not allowed to operate at all. That having said that, it also made it quite difficult to implement the um, projects that we were doing for in the response to COVID. Uh, we had to find creative ways of just being able to do that work. So, for instance, some of the contractors would actually purchase materials from a site that was stopped um, because they couldn't even access materials because the entire value chain had, had ground to a halt because of the various um, lockdowns. Construction um, was allowed to reopen in the um, differentiated uh, lockdown level three. Um, so that was the adjusted lockdown level three um, uh, when it was when it was finally gazetted by national government, and um, of course though you know there was um, a slow slow pace to the start because all sites had to now adhere to the COVID regulations uh, put in place at the time. Uh, what we have seen though, unfortunately, is that some of those projects and those companies that um, were on those projects and appointed to do um, work on those projects actually um, failed to make it past and through um, the COVID lockdown regulations and the lockdown periods. Um, six to eight months of not operating in a business um, did leave about uh, three or four of the companies that were doing uh, work for us um, on the back foot and in, in essence um, were forced to shut down. Uh, with the forced, um, forcing them to shut down meant that we have to um, terminate some of those contracts, um, start afresh, and look for, for contractors who can now complete those projects. So it also affected um, directly, um, very in a very direct way, the work that the Department of Infrastructure Development was doing um, during uh, before COVID. Um, I think that we have still yet to see the, the, the real overall impact and effects of COVID um, on businesses. Um, if a business is unable to invoice for two to three months, um, you then start feeling serious pressure. So one can imagine what would have happened um, after six to eight months of not being able to invoice, but your overheads remain, salaries must still be paid, um, staff must still be kept, um, and you know work must still continue. Now, MEC, with that um, at the top of mind, the Premier also mentioned infrastructure um, to the development of um, township real estate. Um, what projects or goals um, do your department have in mind, you know, to help achieve these developments? Um, so what actually the, the Premier is speaking about is to really um, formalize the, 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 township, um, the, the township real estate um, economy. It's an economy on its own. Um, so what we refer to as the backrooms, 
um, we've been working on a policy just around that to say that instead of building um, back rooms that are illegally connected um, without municipal approvals to um, the current bulk services, let's uh, put a process in place that regularizes and identifies that there is um, this township real estate um, and it's quite a niche market. Um, it is an income generating market for those who qualify to be landlords um, because they have space at, at the, um, in their, their backyards for, for lack of a better word. Um, but it does need the municipality to come on board to be able to address issues around um, service infrastructure. So that's the electricity, that's the water, um, that's the sanitation, et cetera. Um, so we're looking at that, and I know that my colleague um, in the executive at the Department of Human Settlements has been speaking about this quite extensively for some time, and I'm sure that the Executive Council will look at that process going forward. Now, MSC, um, you know, with everything that has been said and what the um, Premier um, spoke about, um, coming back to your department as um, infrastructure development and property management, um, what is um, your, your, your readiness strategy, your readiness plans? Is your department ready um, to deliver um, on what um, was said in the Premier's speech? Yes, well, definitely we are. I think um, one of the key um, issues that the Premier um, raised in the speech, which we quite we agree completely with, is the fact that DID can't be everything to everybody. So, you know, if you're a jack of all trades, but um, but a master of none, you end up doing nothing or very little, or the impact is not felt. What we want to be as DID is really an infrastructure delivery department. Um, and of course, that means to, to be able to say to client departments, there are some things that you must be able to do on your own. Uh, the Premier mentioned maintenance in particular. Um, you don't need the type of capacity, um, a very big department such as, as, as DID, um, that needs to go through an extensive uh, procurement process, for instance, uh, to put up a fence at a school, as an example. But that should definitely be done by, um, by, by line departments. And infrastructure, the Department of Infrastructure Development must look at coordinating and ultimately delivering on what, um, what we would speak about as being high impact, um, high um, high value infrastructure in the province. So we will be working together with um, with the client departments. Uh, we will be working together with the Premier's office to make sure that the ID does um, focus on the big infrastructure delivery, as well as, um, you know, just being able to refocus ourselves on the property management aspect of the department. MEC, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate having you and your time. Thank you to MEC, Tasnim Mutaro, um, MEC for Infrastructure Development and Property Management, and goodbye to everyone.